Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of All Things IDA. In today's episode I'm going to be talking about IDA for Linux. Now this video is more geared towards the people who use IDA for Windows and have little to no experience in Linux and perhaps have some questions. So I'm going to be answering questions such as is it too much difference to use IDA for Linux? Do I need a virtual machine to debug Windows applications, for example? Do I need a Windows machine to be compiling some code and testing it? Can I even use IDA remotely from my Windows machine, be it the text UI or the graphical interface? Can I use my plugins or write plugins, deploy them? How easy? And one big advantage of also exploring Linux is the abundance of open source projects that we can use and compile easily on Linux. It will be not necessarily the same case for Windows. It can be harder to build. Sometimes those open source projects don't even exist for Windows, for example. So there's an advantage to have this flexibility and use either in a different platform depending on the problem we're facing. With that, let's get started. So first things first, I do have Ubuntu 24 installed. This is a physical machine that I have remoted into from a Windows host via XRDP installed here in Ubuntu. And I also installed IDA in my tools folder. Now we can just simply say IDA 64. We can run it. We can pick a program, for example, this pre-disassembled database. And we can see that this is the same UI. Everything is the same. There will be the differences, for example, certain plugins might be missing because they're purely Windows, for example, or certain things that we cannot directly do. We have to install, for example, debug server on Windows to debug Windows, which is the case if we were on Windows, we want to debug Linux, we have to deploy a Linux debug server and so on. But this is the same idea as the decompiler we see is going to be the same stuff, same interface and everything. So here, for example, and so on. So that's the decompiler. Shift F2, we have this. We can run scripts, we can run Python, and so on. Now, what about plugins and the SDK? Well, I also have unpacked the SDK here. And I went to the hello folder in the plugins. And we're going to show you the first hello world plugin as well. Real quick, I'm going to build it. So this is the simple plugin. Let's just change the menu display here. And here is going to say uh, warning box, hello world. Okay, we're ready to build. So here, since we're already on Linux, unlike on Windows, we, where we might need to set up SIGWIN, Visual Studio 19, and, and it's a bit of a headache on Windows, unless you're using IDA CMake, which makes it much better. But on Linux, you already have GNU Make and so on. You just uh, type Make. When I do Make, it will build it and deploy it in the Plugins folder of the SDK in bin. Usually, bin, as I've spoken in the introduction to the SDK, one of the first videos on the channel, we usually prefer to take a copy of IDA binaries or IDA installation and put it in the SDK slash bin. Like this, we have two copies, development IDA and the production stable IDA, where we don't have half working plugins and, and stuff that might crash. So we keep the development copy in the SDK. And since I built the 32-bit plugin version, I did not specify EA64, so my plugin is this this one here hello.so and we have to run ida not ida64 so i will just run the development ida from the bin folder and let, i don't need a, a database for now just gonna run it with minus t and if we go to the plugins menu here all things ida hello world and i press ok and here it is that's the plugin that displays the warning message it's gonna be the same if I wanted to build the EA64 version, so all I have to do is just specify that macro. This is part of programming for IDA as well. I have covered that many times. And now the only difference here is it should emit hello64.so and then it will be picked up by IDA64. So I have to run IDA64. So this is for the plugins. Now, one more topic as well worthwhile mentioning is if you want to work with windows binaries and you don't have a windows virtual machine 
Well, we can use Wind uh, Emulator here, this, and we can test it. So first, I'm going to use one of the projects I have prepared a while back that lets us course compile Windows code and Linux. That's written in C++. So if I also explore this folder here, I do have a Hello World application. I have a build script and a make file that will help me cross compile. So let's build it. I'm going to leverage the build script and build a 64-bit version just to stay modern here. And I have the hello. We can try as well the graphical one. So if I say wine here, build 64 slash hello win. This is what you're going to see. This is a graphic Windows Windows uh, application with a, which creates a window window procedure it does the paint let's disassemble it and quickly debug it so I'm gonna also disassemble it with IDA64 override since I already tested it okay here we have it we have the dwarf debug symbols for example in this case since we use the land Microsoft compiler this is it here we have main I can decompile and that's the win main. This is my win main, which corresponds to the actual win main we have here, and so on. If I want to run this application, for example, I have to first run the debug server. So in the IDA installation, we have debug servers, and we also have the win32 or win64. I'm gonna run those via wine. So sudo wine and let's invoke the server. And this should run the debug server on the local host. We have it listening here. Now, all I have to do is switch debugger, select the remote Windows debugger. Now, if we copy the debug server to Windows, then it's going to run on Windows exactly. Now, the debug server is running under emulation, so we can do that, but it's not necessarily the same experience. It's going to be depending on the limitations of the Wine emulator. Now, Let's change the process options and make sure we have localhost. Okay. And for example, I can already put some breakpoints. I can put breakpoint here. And here it's running. We're ready to go. Let's hit F9. And here we have it. We are suspended. We have as well whatever the emulator decides to emulate. For example, look at the if we do enumeration, this is what we will see. See the application having this name but then the windows dlls are really stubs are not really the windows dlls so all right so this is the debugging part now i want to show you how we can run ida which is installed on a linux system uh, remotely which is really not rocket science now i did also SSH into the same server. So here, for example, so if I say here IDA T, this is a common case, but what about the graphical interface? So let's exit here, F10 and abort. Okay, what about IDA64? Well, I'm using the Xming X server, which is an X server for Windows. So I do have Xmin running. I can see it here, Xming. I can run IDA Linux here. So here, for example, if I say IDA 64 before i run either just to a test you can run is for example install the xis and run it and if if the x11 forwarding is working then x11 should render from linux on your windows machine and let's just run either graphical interface here we have it and it feels seamless let me run either windows just to show you so here this is my ida on windows it's either windows and this is the IDA remote and we can see that this is my server name here and this is remoted. I can say file open for example and browse my home folder. Let's say and disassemble anything we want whether it's a Windows app, Linux app, etc. But I love this experience. Alright, thank you and I'll see you next time.